Hello everyone. The news sources continue to focus on the effects of the war in Ukraine on global politics and global economy. Uh, this article appeared on the BBC site today and I would say for the most part the answer is yes uh, because Europe has taken on the brunt of Ukrainian refugee crisis, particularly Poland, but also next door neighbors. So for that reason, because people of Europe had to basically figure out where to put millions of Ukrainian refugees, where to house them, how to feed them, how to find them jobs, how to put their children in school, all of that has been tremendous on Europe's part. So yes, I would say for the most part, Europe is providing enough help. Now, the one area where it would be nice to have more is the area, of course, of weapons and ammunition. And Europe in this particular case is in a difficult situation because on one hand, they understand the threat, okay? They understand that they need to ramp up their own uh, military-industrial complex because it is still unknown how the war in Ukraine will end or when it will end. So they understand that part. At the same time, they also understand that Ukraine needs help because, again, that puts them at direct risk. So they are having to balance the need to stockpile their own weapons, their own technology, and the need to help Ukraine. At the same time, some of them are more outspoken than the others. Once again, uh, Baltic states continue to be among the staunchest supporters of Ukraine. In this particular case, Latvian Prime Minister uh, Ivica Selina uh, basically openly criticized Putin for constantly issuing statements to intimidate uh, Russia's neighbors. And she's right. You know, he's getting away with saying shit like, you know, who is next? Uh, we really need to bring back uh, the Baltic states. We really need to take back Poland. There's been conversations about attacking Germany, France, you name it. It's a new target every day with them. And considering that they have, in fact, attacked Ukraine, you know, you can't just say, oh, that's never going to happen because it is happening. So who knows what he decides to do next? This piece is covered by multiple sources. So... I want to summarize this for you. In December of 2022, when Russia was already realizing that the war in Ukraine was not just going to quickly be over, that Ukrainians were not going to roll over and surrender, Russia had considered dropping a nuclear bomb somewhere on Ukrainian territory. And intelligence sources were saying as much, including U.S. intelligence sources. At the time, world leaders, including President Biden, informed Putin that they were prepared to fire back if that happened. So the operation was not carried out. At the same time, what surprises me is this. You had a chance to apply pressure to Putin and you did not pressure him using, yes, nuclear tactics into ending the war altogether. Because you know what? It's, he might be insane, but he's not stupid. And it would have only taken him so long to realize that, yeah, you might be able to destroy one in Iskander or two, but how about 10, 20, dozens? 
Okay? So, multiple articles are now talking about, you know, the conversation that took place at the time and about the information that was obtained through U.S. intelligence. So, that was then. What we have now is still the continuing occupation of Ukrainian territory by Russian troops. What we have now still is the uh, control of Zaporizhia nuclear power station. So I'm hoping that the Biden administration and all of the other allies are keeping that in mind. Some type of nuclear attack on Ukrainian territory is still possible, whether it is using a weapon of some type, which Russia has, or whether it is by way of orchestrating a nuclear incident at the largest nuclear power station in Europe. The experience of 2022 should not be discounted, not by any stretch of imagination. And then there's this, oh, Pope Francis, you mean so well, and then you go and do something really dumb. You know, I admire that Pope Francis is so cute that he drives, you know, doesn't drive a fancy car that he, you know, tries to um, commiserate with the poor and so on and so forth. But when he says shit like that, I really just want to... Basically, he had this big interview, and during the interview, he said that, in fact, it would be a sign of courage for Ukraine to surrender and negotiate with the country that had destroyed its land, kidnapped its children, raped its women and girls, murdered its elderly and babies. Yeah, that would be so brave that it is a sign of courage to throw up a, a white flag. And again, I invite Pope Francis to go and visit Zaporizhia Front, Kharkiv, Odessa. Odessa would be good right now. And maybe spend a few days in the trenches, you know, with Ukrainian soldiers. Maybe go to the sites that have been previously occupied by Russians, go to the cities where children's hospitals, schools, and kindergartens have been bombed and babies were murdered, maybe then it will finally sink in. Until that, just, just shut up. Please, just stop your idiocy.